This is actually gonna be one of the easiest tanks I think I've ever made. What a good little guy. This is a terrible idea. Do not do what I'm doing. Do not do. Pick this up piece by piece and transfer it into this tank. I'm gonna turn on the underlighting in three, two, one. Welcome back guys. Today we are making something you won't really believe we're making. It's gonna be a seven gallon cube like you've never seen before. If you've seen an aquarium like this before, you're allowed to hit the dislike button twice, but I bet you haven't. Let me show you what we're gonna make. We're gonna be taking all these supplies that you see here, some of these rocks, pump, we have some lights, we have some more lights, we have some gravel, and we're gonna be making a new home for this little betta right here. Moving out. This guy we've had for a few months. His fins have been looking just a little bit tattered. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, the water's always clean. I keep up on water changes. He's always eating. I'm really not sure what would have been causing the, the fins to get a little frayed. There's nothing in the tank that he can really cut himself on, except for maybe this little hole in the back, this terracotta pot. But mainly, I wanted to let this guy have a few days or a week or two or a month or so to get his fins looking better so he can put him in this new tank and he can look his absolute best. But it was just taking a little bit too long. Nothing stops this train, nothing. And I wanted to make the tank and I think he wants his new tank to be made. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make the tank and I bet he's gonna enjoy it so much. His fins are gonna heal much faster than they would in this silly little five gallon tank right here. This is actually gonna be one of the easiest tanks I think I've ever made. The only difficult part about this tank build and this is actually a pretty crucial part of this build. We have to make a base for it. So we're gonna take some wood pieces and frame out a base to get the tank up off of the stand and give it some room for what we're gonna be doing under the tank. Uh, and for this to work, we need a little platform with a hole in it. And I will be explaining why exactly we need a hole in that platform. But before we make this new tank, it's late in the evening though, and all of the fish are super hungry. So we're gonna go through the fish room and feed all of our aquariums, make sure our fish are fed. I got inspired to do this video later in the day and the fish are gonna wanna go to bed soon and I am not gonna wanna go to bed soon. So we're gonna make sure that the fish are taken care of. And if the fish are taken care of, then I'm taken care of. Let's feed all these fish. But speaking of feeding these fish, it's very hard to even see in this tank with the level of gunk and buildup and algae and stuff on this front glass. Oh, disgusting guys, can you see this? I know you guys won't mind a quick time lapse of cleaning this front glass to get your little OCD hearts pumping. Let's clean this glass really quick. One thing I like to do, especially when you turn the flow off, you can see it even better. You almost wouldn't even notice that I missed anything, but if you wanna check, look over the top and looking down, you can see that giant patch I missed there. Oh, sorry guys for making you wait so long. Let's feed them. Just annihilating all this, these tangs are getting so big. I could feed them every second of every day and I bet they would keep eating. These guys are wild. Get in my belly! Next, we'll go right next door. Ranchu and white cloud minnows. Boys getting sick. So is this Pleco, honestly. This dude's trailer fins are like wild. They're like half the size of his body. I don't like bow front tanks. It's so hard to film the fish inside. It's fine to look through like with your eyes, but like looking with a lens through a camera is just like, it's so distorted. Like I can't even show you guys. Everything's so like stretched. Look at that guy. Beautiful. Beautiful specimen, look at that. Next, let's continue the carp theme. We have goldfish, we have koi, we have butterfly koi, we have shibunkins, we have some white cloud minnows, we have mollies, which have babies. Let me show you. This water, by the way, is crystal clear. If you can't tell, let's look at that plant way down there. Crystal clear. Let's see if we can spot some babies. These mollies, this one is a Dalmatian mother somewhere. We have a Dalmatian female and a Dalmatian male. Where'd he go? There, male. Not a fan of mollies except for these, the Dalmatians. And we have Dalmatian babies where, look at that. That's a baby. That's a fry. Where's more fry? There's like 
probably 12 in here. Where'd they go? Oh, there's one. There's another one. I don't know how these survive in here, to be honest. Of all of the fish that you would think would just gulp smaller fish, you'd think it would be like carp and goldfish and koi, but they do not care. They don't care about the babies. They let them live. They're so kind. But now we have Dalmatian Molly babies. Also, you might wonder if you've seen my other videos, this used to be over here, this pond. And I've also moved this whole plant rack shelf that used to be on this wall, but now we have this open space for us to use to build stuff. And most importantly, we can now see front on the 180 gallon tank that will eventually be the large saltwater fish tank. Large fish, large saltwater fish angels and tangs and puffers and sharks and eels and everything, oh my, it's gonna go in that tank. Biggest tank of the fish room, right there. Not, it's not that big, it's 180 gallons, which is like kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of small to be honest, but that'll be cool. And then we can see it because this piece of wood was in the way. This giant wood right here was sticking directly up and you couldn't see this tank. Now you can see it. And we have plenty of room. Some future projects over there don't look too hard. These are not my fish. If you've watched my previous video, you'll know that we are babysitting some fish for the in-laws. And so if you can hear these guys, I'll put my mic right there so you can hear these guys. Let's see if they're hungry. Grab some food. Are you hungry? They need the bucket. They need the bucket to see. So yeah, we're babysitting these fish for a few months. God, they're going crazy. They're gonna jump into the food bucket. Got some babies down in this tank too. Let's go ahead and feed these guys. Another fun thing is these are all supposed to be males. And uh, it seems that one of them is not a male and this not a male is holding some eggs. So that's cool. I mean, we got babies from some fish we were babysitting. So that's fun. Well, we don't have them yet. We'll have to take this one out, put it in another tank so that it can release the eggs or release the fry and not eat them and let these other ones not feast on them. And so we'll raise that one in an additional tank. More tanks, more tanks. We need to put a background on this as well. Like eventually I'm gonna paint this back black so that you can't see through to my workstation on the other side. It's very hard to see these fish because everything wants to focus through the tank onto these plants. This is not a plant channel. This is a fish channel. This camera is biased. Anyway, back to the other side, the 90 gallon planted tank. Let's feed all these angels and barbs. Let's put some over here. This glass needs a cleaning as well. Angelfish, so cool. This water is crystal clear as well. Water quality top tier guys. Aquafina, not today. Fiji, all day. Whatever the best bottled water is, this is what it is. Well, it's RO water. Because I moved my shelf, I had to move the RO system to this wall, have it hanging nicely on the curtain. It's actually on the rack. The rack is on the other side of the curtain. I've attached it through the curtain. So now it's much easier to get to our RO system and our many mixing barrels. So that's cool. You guys probably don't care about that. So we have one more tank to feed and then we're gonna build this tank. This last one is very hard to even see because of all of the floating plants, this water lettuce, got rainbows, glass cats. So Kamaka rainbows and there's some glass catfish. But like I said, there's way too many floating plants up here. So we're gonna take the majority of those out and put some in the koi pond over there and the rest somewhere else probably. And we also need to get some more fish because this tank is just a little meh. It's also dark, that doesn't help. I think we need some quarry cats. I think we need some more Basmani rainbows. At least we need maybe a butterfly fish, some hatchet fish, something like that. Amazon, this is our Amazon tank, I guess. Except for the Hillstream Lodge. Wait, are they from the Amazon? <coughs> I forget where Hillstream Lodges are from. I, not the Amazon. That's not right. Don't listen to me. It comes from China. Okay, so we gotta make this at least somewhat presentable. That's it. Black sheet. C stand. This is a terrible idea. 
Guys, do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do what I'm doing. Do not do. Drain it first. What we're gonna do now is show you guys what we're working with. So I played around with some rocks and this is what I came up with. These are rose quartz, these large ones, and the small ones are purple amethyst. And these fat boys, which are fairly translucent. So as you can see, maybe, you know, light comes through them like a salt lamp, except for unlike a salt lamp, these will not dissolve in water. So this could be the salt lamp aquarium. Hmm. This is the quartz themed aquarium quartz, rose quartz and amethyst. We also have some accent stones. I don't think we'll use this one. It just didn't quite fit with my little layout that I went for here. This is like a little cave. Thank you for that perspective. But in this bag, we have some smaller little amethyst pieces that we might use to accent around or on the base. Let's go over the rest of the supplies. Most of these supplies are pretty cheap. Get your aquarium. Everyone can find an aquarium used or new. That's whatever. The rocks. I'm gonna take you guys along to the place where we got these rocks and they were very cheap because we bought them in bulk. We didn't buy them from an aquarium store. If you guys were to buy these rose quartz and amethyst from an aquarium store, they're gonna be really expensive. We actually bought them in bulk from a rock and mineral um, traveling someone who goes around and sells like bulk rocks and minerals. So you can buy like basically pallets full of this stuff for just per pound and it's very cheap. What was not cheap per pound was what we wanted for the gravel, the substrate. I wanted a very translucent quartz. So we found this stuff on Amazon and it's basically uh, you know, quartz. It's not silica based, so it's not gonna have any effect on diatoms in the tank. It's not gonna really create a big diatom spike like some of the silica based sands, but I wanted something that was very clear, like basically white, well clear, not white, translucent. And we have a basic light little gooseneck thing. This is actually how the light came when you order stuff on Amazon and it comes in a like, it comes in this box with no padding. It's not, it's, this is how the cord wasn't even wrapped up. This has to be a used light. I tested it and it works, but I love buying new stuff that looks used. I actually don't even remember what this is. Oh, this is the most important part to this whole thing essentially. I mean, if, if we didn't have this, this would still be a cool tank, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Uh, and then we have our filter, which is just a kind of a small filter that is gonna be not too powerful for the beta. If it was any bigger than this, it would be too strong for him. And we'll probably end up keeping this little spray bar on here just to make sure it's not too strong and pushes him around or anything like that. That would not be good, especially with his little tattered fins that he's trying to nurse back to looking beautiful. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. So yeah, these were by far the most expensive part of this whole thing. Per box, this is actually like a each one is like a two pack. It's like two pounds. I forget how much these were. These were so expensive that I tried to block it out of my memory. I don't remember how, many, how much these were. These were this much. <laughs> I would never pay this much money for aquarium gravel if I were like you. You don't know me. You're not God. <laughs> I'm making this video for you guys to show you a cool tank, but you can do the same thing with other gravel. Maybe it's not quite as clear, in this 90 gallon, we essentially have what is very close to the same thing. It's very dirty and it's, they're not all clear, but th this is also a quartz gravel. So if you were to keep this, like if you took this out and bleached it and got all the algae off, it would be pretty much the same thing. These stones are more rough, whereas these are actually polished and pretty round. So it should be pretty easy to keep this stuff clean, clear, and allowing light to pass through, which is the goal of this tank, if you haven't figured out so far. You can obviously play around with the rockscape for hours and days and weeks and years. I threw this together and I think it's all right. We'll see how it looks in the tank. Well, what's really nice is this tank came with these little cardboard sheets and it's obviously the same dimensions as the tank. So we just played around in here and it's got plenty of room all the way around for fish to swim. There's not really any super sharp edges. If there were, you could just take a stone and sort of rub it on the edge and it'll file it down. But first things first, we need to figure out how to make the base for this tank. We need about hmm, maybe a one inch piece of wood, trim all the way around with a little platform, empty in the middle, hollow, so we can put a hole and allow light to come through. 
we're gonna go grab some wood. That's what I'm looking for. These, I don't know if I have any. Nope, not that one. No, hmm. I found these two and a half inch pieces. These smaller ones, for some reason, aren't exactly the same thickness. So I think we're gonna go with these thicker ones. Once we get these cut and ready to frame, we're gonna screw them together, use some glue, and then we're gonna need a plywood sheet to go in the middle. So we're gonna cut that sheet out to fit. And then we're gonna cut a hole in the plywood in the middle and then secure that to the center of the frame. So let's chop these guys up. few moments later. We've got the base made, and I think this actually turned out really well. This top piece is not attached, but it really doesn't need to be, because the tank is just gonna sit flush on the top of this, which is fine for this tank, because it's only seven gallons, and it doesn't weigh that much. But if you had a 20 gallon, 30, more than that, I would make sure that these pieces are as wide as the distance between the center plate and the bottom of the frame. It'll be able to hold way more weight that way. All right, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. The hole in the back. Add our tank. Make sure everything's all square. Yeah, that looks really good. So as you can see, the tank is fitting perfectly on this base. All we have to do now is we're gonna take the tank off. We're gonna remove this white foam piece and actually cut out the same shape as we cut out uh, the center wood piece so that we can allow light to come through. This. this back on here. Be gone, fuck! And we can add our foam. Perfect. So now we can add the most critical part of this build. This right here. These are under cabinet lighting, like for a kitchen. This is what you would place under some kitchen cabinets to illuminate your countertop. And these are really thin LED lights. And it comes with three. We won't need these adhesive pads that this comes with because these are only gonna be sitting on the table or whatever your stand is on. We've got our power cable, a little connection, a little on off switch right here. And then we have our connection points where we plug in our lights. Let's just separate this connection. We're gonna put it through the hole we drilled in the back. Take the other side, reconnect it. Now we can install the lights. And that looks good to me. Let's try these out. Powering on, nice. That's gonna be perfect. So our tank's gonna sit right on top of here. One thing I do think we need to get, and I know for a fact, if we leave this on, we're gonna get algae on the bottom of the tank that's gonna limit how much light's gonna come through. So if we can't get a dimmer, what I plan to do is just have this set for a few hours a day, maybe a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening to come on. Ideally, we could get a dimmer that might be able to ramp up the lights in the morning and then have the main light come on and then ramp this on in the evening as well and then off again later into the evening. But I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. Let's get this tank cleaned up. 
Got the glass all clean now, that looks a lot better. I think I'm gonna go ahead and set up the light on top and then we'll turn off this bottom light for the final reveal and we'll just use the top light that I got to escape the tank. All right, we've got modes. Let's see what happens. Power, we have light. That seems to be the standard color. We can go, oh, we can go brighter. That's actually pretty bright. Let's go low, low, low. This looks like the salt water function. This is more of like a warm daylight, blue, and then a cool daylight. Let's stick with this for now and just see how this looks. I kind of like the color that this is making the glass and everything. It's kind of a cooler color, we'll see. This is gonna be my next favorite part besides doing the stand and finishing the stand up. That looks great. Now we're gonna add the rock structure. Since I've sort of predetermined how I want the rock structure to look, all we're gonna do is just try to pick this up piece by piece and transfer it exactly as it is into this tank. Now we have to do that without obviously breaking the tank and also we wanna not forget how we have this laid out. I actually don't want the substrate to be very thick. So the thinnest we can make this, the better. That means that the more light is gonna come through. Um, so that means we're gonna put the stones directly on the bottom of the tank. Gotta be fairly careful because they're probably pretty sharp and pointy and we do not want to drop these on the bottom. Gotta put the big one in first. Now the trick is gonna be getting this one to sit just right. Gotta find all the right contact points so that it will sit without falling. So we have this in here. So you see how much faster everything goes in if we plan it out ahead of time. I'm probably gonna move just a couple of these around, maybe an inch or two, and then we'll put some of this gravel in. I'm satisfied with that. All right, let's add some gravel. I think I'm gonna end up liking this more than I thought I would. This is not the typical style that I would have made a tank in. This was actually Brittany's idea. Wow, okay, so I'm not gonna lie, this is actually looking pretty good. I mean, this is even without any under lighting. So as of now, that's a pretty cool tank. Um, I had wanted to put plants in here initially, but I couldn't figure out exactly what kind of plants. I wanted some like, maybe some white Anubias or some light colored plants, not anything really green. Um, maybe more like on the purple boost side of things, but this looks really good. I cannot wait to get these lights on. I think we should actually test that out right now. So I actually have to turn off this light in order to plug in the other one where it's at right now. I'm gonna turn on the under lighting in three, two, one. That looks really cool. The only thing I think it's missing is a little bit more light under the big rock, but that might be kind of hard to pull off because of just how thick that rock is. Knowing now exactly where these rocks are, I can sort of move these light pucks and get them directly under these rocks. Um, there's also a chance I can maybe pull this one forward a little bit. That looks pretty cool. I mean, it might be kind of hard to see on camera. Let's turn this light off, but that's definitely glowing, guys. That looks really cool. When, when all the lights are off in the room, this tank is gonna look super cool. This is like your very own salt lamp aquarium. Sweet. So now I'm gonna clean up all of this stuff, this backdrop. We're gonna move the tank and set it on its final place underneath this 60 gallon. And when I move this over there, I'm gonna adjust those lighting pucks so they're under the right spot for these larger stones. So let's get all this stuff moved and move the tank. Oh, we've also got a whole box of gravel left over. So that's good. That would have saved us like an extra 20 bucks. This is crazy, guys. This purple setting on this light for like reef tanks looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to a normal setting and then we can go ahead and add some of these little accent stones. We're just using these to add a bit more interest. Looks a little sterile right now. Doesn't look very natural, I guess you'd say. A couple here and there. Where are these? All right, that's all of them. This thing looks absolutely insane. Honestly, better than I expected it to turn out. I mean, I thought it was gonna look pretty cool. Wow, 
This is sweet. This fish, this white betta with purple and pink, it's just like, this is the reason we picked this fish because it has sort of these same color undertones and uh, it's gonna look great in here. You might be wondering, there's no top on this tank. I do have some screen that we can make a little top for it so there's no worry of this guy jumping out because as you may know, bettas love to jump. So now I think it's time we add the filter, we add the heater, we'll get some water in here. I'm so excited to see this thing with water in it and a fish. Let's get it filled up. Here we are with water. This thing looks absolutely amazing. It's actually kinda of hard to tell there's even water in here. When we get some surface agitation, we're gonna get some nice shimmer on these rocks. That looks crazy. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take off this little filter that's been on the 90 gallon overnight. It's had a little bit of time to cycle. We're gonna throw that in the tank, let that run in there for a few hours, and then I'm actually gonna do a water change because I didn't clean any of the gravel or the rocks ahead of time. They really shouldn't have anything on them except for just some dust. So we're gonna run that filter in here for a little while, get that water mixing around, do a water change, fill it back up. Then we'll add this little carbon canister back to the filter and let it pull out any of the impurities that might be in the water. We'll move this heater over, squeeze out the sponge filter in the new tank, and then once we make sure the water temperature's right, we can pretty much move this guy right over. I think you're gonna love your new tank, little guy. Let's give him a little snack. Oh, he's crazy. Filter's a little powerful for this size of tank, especially for a betta. So I ended up turning the spray bar back to the back of the tank, hitting the back and then it'll come down, come to the front, but the rocks will sort of block a little bit of the flow. So I don't think it'll be too crazy. I'm watching some of like little flecks float through the water and it doesn't look too strong for a slow moving fish like a betta. But as the filter gets a little clogged, it won't be quite as strong. Plus when we put this little carbon block back in there, it should slow down the flow a little bit more too. But I think this is, uh, this is a good size. I would not use this filter on anything smaller than a five gallon. That would definitely be too strong unless you have some way of blocking the flow like with the sponge over the outflow tube or something like that. Yeah, but this filter is gonna work really well in here, I think. Plus it makes nice little ripples on the top of the water, but uh, this definitely helps break the flow up a little bit and makes the water not so chaotic. I think it's time to move the fish. I've had the heater and the filter in here, looking at 78, 77.9 degrees. And the old tank, 77.5, extremely close. Let's grab a net. I'm gonna grab our sponge filter. Do not want any moss in the new tank. And we're just gonna take this filter and just squeeze some of the crap out. That'll help seed the filter nicely. We've got our net, we're gonna scoop them out. Here we go. Checking it out, getting some air. He really fits the vibe of this tank, I think. The current does not look too strong. I think he's gonna do just fine in here. I think I will turn the light down just a little bit so it's not, not too bright for him. What a good little guy. And of course, we cannot forget the whole purpose of this tank. This is awesome. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for maybe something else to put in this tank, either another fish, a type of plant, 
I think I'm gonna turn the lights off and give this guy a chance to settle down. We're just gonna let him hang out in here, get acclimated. I'm gonna cover the top so that he can't jump out if he gets a little distressed. And that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you don't wanna miss the next video that I've got planned. We've got some crazy videos coming up on the channel, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.